Hey, how's everyone doing? It's Liam the Death Doom Metalhead. It's time for another Death and Doom all over the world where I pick one country and talk about all my favourite death metal, doom metal, black metal, anything extreme of said country. So this week is going to be all about Sweden, as the thumbnail tells you. Um, love Swedish death metal, black metal, uh, doom metal. There's, there's so much coming out of that country. And, you know, there's a massive list of famous bands uh, that are all Swedes. Um, and there'll be a few obviously in this list because, you know, some people already know I'm big fans of certain bands. But the whole reason to do these videos is kind of show you some maybe bands you might not have heard of, uh, side projects, you know, stuff like that. Um, and yeah, and kind of pimp out certain bands from that country and it's, you know, a bit of fun. Um, Germany got a bit of a dislike on my last one, uh, six dislikes I think it was on, on that video, which is quite funny. So I don't know what the reason for that was. Maybe it was me, I don't know, or people don't like German death doom and that i don't know how you wouldn't but yeah strange but yeah see how this one goes because it's quite funny because the finnish one fine the german one must have been something i was done but anyway yeah okay so in this one i've got uh lp cds there's no tapes um just you know these two formats and i'll kick off with a super group because they're awesome and that is firespawn this is their debut from 2015 through century media Shadow Realms. If you don't know who Firespawn are, it's a side project with members from Entombed, uh, Necrophobic, uh, Unleashed. They're the three main bands. Um, Petroff is the vocalist who everyone knows is from Entombed. Entombed AD. I don't, I don't know what he's doing. I mean, he's obviously not very well these days, but he's been in quite a few different albums. But the three albums which I have of this band are fantastic. If you like raw, aggressive, but super technical death metal in like that Swedish style. You know, this is right up the street. It's not the HM2 kind of style that they're obviously known for in their other bands. And, you know, obviously black metal bands. This is more... I mean, it's more to do with the guitarist from Unleashed, I think, doing the more technical stuff with the solos and the melodic leads. But, you know, Petrov's vocals sound fantastic on this. And probably my favourite of the bands he's in, or albums he's done, is probably the Firespawn stuff, just because it's just so heavy and aggressive. Drumming is fantastic. Um, I think the drummer's been in Dimmy Ball Gear... And necrophobic again um you know all those big swedish bands um i think victor brandt i think his name is he's the second guitar player on here but he's also obviously been bass player for timmy ball gear uh i think he also does stint in satiricon live six feet under live you know they've all been in really big bands and all very talented musicians the artwork i don't know if it'll do it justice on my camera but it's an oil painting done by a guy called pablo from italy and i'll leave a link to his Instagram page below because his work is fantastic he, you know he does these big oil paintings and then they obviously put them on CDs and LPs and stuff like that and it's fantastic look at that love it um, I don't know if there's a picture of the band in here you can see them there really good stuff so definitely recommend these guys I've mentioned them a few times on my channel um, they're really really good band so that's Firespawn. Next one is a solo project with members from all over the world, but it's one core member is Swedish, and that is Wilhelm Lin. I can't pronounce his name properly. And that is the band, probably the funniest name of a lot, The Gardeners. Uh, this is their debut, I think. Uh, the System of Nature. Really, really good Death Doom. Like, I got this for hardly anything, and I, I never heard of them apart from... I had an EP I listened to on Spotify quite a lot, that, that's how I found them, where it kind of recommends you certain bands. And then when I was shopping around on Discogs, this came up in the UK for a fiver, and I jumped on it straight away because it's a fantastic album, and I don't think it's on any streaming sites anymore. But this is really, really good Death Doom, you know, in that kind of My Dying Bride way, very epic, very old school My Dying Bride, it's not the, the newer stuff, it's all heavy guttural vocals, really like 90 sounding dual lead work you know that that kind of vibe and the cover's really cool as well i really like this album you know nothing fancy on the back just a grave and some trees but yeah one you know i've got the the uh ep as well which has a uh the black metal cover of some song on there but it's all done acoustically transylvanian hunger i think it was a track yeah so yeah, go check these guys out. Easily find them on YouTube. Really good stuff if you're interested. So there you go, The Gardeners. And then this one is another kind of mishmash of bands, but the main guy is what makes it work for me. 
I've shown this before. This is Ordo Infernus Inferus. It's some kind of Roman. Um, and that's the song album title there. Um, I'll put links below to explain my madness. But yeah, this is all about the Roman Empire. Um, and the main guy in it is a chap called uh, Sebastian Ramstedt, I think he's pronounced. He's the lead guitar player for Necrophobic, which is a big Swedish you know, black metal band, death metal band. They kind of cross all those kind of genres. And they've got a new album coming out this month, actually, I think. Um, this is what makes it work, because he just shreds all over this album. Loads of lead work from him, dive bombs, loads of speedy shreddy stuff, loads of great riffs. Um, this is an American cross with Swedish project, so I think the majority of it is Swedish. But then there's some like American musicians, one from Dismer, I think is in this, and a few other ones I've never heard of before. But it's a really strong band. Yeah, I think this is the only um, album they've ever put out. I don't know if you can see them there or not. But there's the guy in question. It's really shiny on my screens. He's a phenomenal guitar player. And yeah, I got this through uh, Hammerheart Records for like five euros, something like that. So I think it's still on there. Go grab it because it's a really good album. Basically sounds like Vader. So if you like that kind of thing, you know, it's definitely worth your time. That one there. And then this one I was really happy to get. This is a re-release from this year. This originally came out in 1996. And that is the band Memory Garden with their debut Tides. Brilliant, brilliant band. Um, it's hard to describe who they sound like because... It's very epic doom, so they've obviously been inspired by Candlemas, Dio, all that kind of vibe, you know, the, the traditional sounding doom, but the guitars are really heavy, so really modern, well it wouldn't be modern because it was the mid-90s, but it's more chunky guitars, really good shreddy solos, really nice melodic leads, and the vocals are really, really strong on this album, really good stuff. So if you like that kind of epic doom, like Candlemas, but not as stompy, this is more melodic, and it flows really nice. I mean, there's some stompy riffs obviously in there, but um, yeah, this is fantastic. I got this through Johnny Roger Records, which is an Italian based label that put these back out. I think they've got the rights to all the Memory Garden albums. So I'll be looking out for the rest of them because I got the EP and this one this year. And I think next year there's another two coming out. So yeah, really good band. Definitely worth checking this album out. It's an instant classic for me. Um, I can't be bothered to show you the vinyl because it's only blue. No one cares about that. And then this band is probably the most well-known one bar one on my list here. And that is The Mighty Dismember. I love this band. I prefer these guys over Entombed. I think this album is stronger than Left Hand Path. A lot of people probably hate me for it, but, you know, that's what I think. Left Hand Path is obviously a classic album, but for me, this just kind of edges it in its like, aggressiveness. And it flows a bit more faster, so, you know, it doesn't stall anywhere, it just goes. Um, yeah, brilliant, brilliant band. Really hard to get hold of a lot of their releases. This one I got quite cheap, but some of them go for silly money. Um, Massive Killing Capacity is the one I really want, because that's the one I first heard of these guys, but get that on vinyl was ridiculous. Um, this is a Back on Black reissue from maybe last year or the year before. Not even longer than that, 2010. Wow, didn't know that. So yeah, definitely worth checking these guys out if you've never heard of Dismember before. I mean, I imagine most people have. If you haven't, it's just that HM2 crusty chainsaw guitar tone, really aggressive vocal style. Yeah, fucking awesome stuff. And then this one I discovered this year, we were actually going to play with these guys. I mentioned this before in an old video, so if you're new to my channel, you won't know this, but my band Consecration, we were going to support these guys in my home city just before COVID kicked in. Um, so they couldn't come and tour over here, which is shit, because they're really, really good. And that is Creeping Flesh. Uh, with the album Into the Meat Grinder. This is a vinyl pressing from this year. The album came out last year on CD, but they pressed it on vinyl this year. Really, really good band. Like If you like Bolt Thrower, aggressive death metal, thrown into one big blender, this is the kind of thing you're going to get. So it's like, it sounds like Bolt Thrower on the guitars, but the vocal style kind of crosses all those little subgenres of death metal, so you get a kind of nice mix. Sounds really modern. And it, you know, it doesn't sound like a Bolt Thrower clone. It's just got kind of that the DNA of their riffage, you know, with the, you know, stompy kind of military style war, you know, all that kind of vibe. Yeah, and even the cover kind of gives it away. But these guys are brilliant. And I was really gutted we couldn't play with them. And hopefully, you know, that will happen again at some point in the future when gigs become a normal thing again. But these guys are awesome. I really enjoy this album. You know, it's not one of those ones you can get bored of really quickly. All the songs are slightly different. 
Um, and yeah, it sounds better on vinyl. So yeah, really good album. That's Creeping Flesh. And then the last one of the LPs is the Mighty Candle Mass, which has been with me, this band, since I was 18 when I discovered these guys, and I've loved them ever since. They're the first, I would say, proper doom band I ever listened to. Maybe Sabbath, but I class Sabbath as more of a hard rock, classic rock kind of band. I wouldn't call them a doom band. They've obviously inspired the genre, but these guys here, for me, are the originators of, you know, the early... Doom scene where you've got like Epic Doom, Stoner Doom, there's all those kind of crossovers and obviously they are the pioneers of Epic Doom but these, this is an awesome album, this is the 2019, is it 2019? Yeah, through Napalm Records, The Door to Doom, absolute classic and even features Tony Iommi from Black Sabbath on it doing a guitar solo, original vocalist back in the band um, on the first album Epicus, Doomicus Metallicus so you've got like the original lineup from then, and I love this album. It's solid. I really enjoy it. And uh, the EP they brought out this year, the one track on it, the proper track was really good, and the rest was just you know bonus stuff. So yeah, brilliant, brilliant band. And I hope they put another album out because this was really solid. But everyone's heard of Candlemas. Um, and then maybe this one you might not have heard of, and I probably can't even pronounce it. I'm gonna have to take it out because the CDs seem to glare. When people show CDs, you just kind of see their monitor, and I'm guilty of that, so I'm going to show you the book where it doesn't glare. That is Soji, I think. I probably butchered that band name. But this is really good Def Doom. Like, really good Def Doom. Came out in 2017, came out through Solitude Productions, which is a label I'm very familiar with, as people know. Um, yeah, not a lot I can say that isn't too different from any other bands they are you know death doom my dying bride paradise lost that that kind of vibe with the growly vocals there's some clean singing in there as well but the, you know the guitar work is fantastic the leads are really good you know production's really strong as well so yeah definitely worth checking these guys out i'll obviously leave a link to some of the lesser known bands so you can kind of check it out on youtube and see what you think so that's that one and then this one is another Swedish band who I believe run part of Solitude Productions. I think one of the guys is a member of it or does something with the label. And I think he's the guy we spoke to when we signed to them, my band anyway. And that is When Nothing Remains. I don't know if you can hear my dog go mental in the background, but he's been a dick. Um, he's doing something annoying. So this is uh, as all torn asunder. There's three of these albums to get from this band. I think they've not done any more than that. It's like I think it's like a trilogy to do some kind of storyline because all the album artwork is very similar. Um, really good melodic Death Doom. There's a lot going on there, lots of different styles mixed into it. It's not just your stereotypical My Dying Bride clone or anything like that. These guys kind of change it up a bit and put lots of different styles into it. Um, really enjoyable album. A bit long on some tracks for me, anyway, on this one anyway. But I still enjoy it, but you know. Time is money these days. Well, they used to be anyway. Now I sit at home, I can actually enjoy albums, you know, all the way through. Um, yeah, this one came out in 2012 through Solitude Productions. Really, really good band. Definitely worth checking them out. And then these guys, they've got a new album coming out this year, which I'm really happy to see because I really like them. That is Draconian. This is the album Arcane Rain Fell. Brilliant, brilliant band. Another one of those um, Death Doom bands that kind of borrow from the My Dying Bride style. But they've got the female operatic vocals on top of the growly stuff so you kind of get a nice crossover uh the one of the guitarists also has his own solo project called doom bs which is really good funeral doom death doom really heavy stuff and uh, he seems to leave all his really heavy guitar riffs for his own project because draconian's more melodic it's heavy but it's definitely more in the operatic melodic kind of genre this is another napalm records release that came out uh in 2005 but yeah, brilliant band if you've never checked them out before. Go and look them up on uh, Bandcamp and stuff like that because their new album is going to be really good. Uh, it's sold out on loads of different uh, formats for the vinyl. I think they've put out like four or five different versions of it and they've all sold out. And I just couldn't afford it at the time, so I'm a bit miffed. But I might have another look. There might be one kicking around. And then this one is straight up death metal, Swedish style, really aggressive, kind of in the vein of Firespawn, that kind of vibe that I showed earlier. And that is Facebreaker. We're dedicated to the flesh, basically all about zombies, eating people, you know, that kind of thing. Really groovy stuff. 
really good production. This came out in 2013 through Cyclone Empire, which is a German label. Yeah, really good band, really heavy. Really like the vocal style on this album. It's kind of like gut rule, but you can understand every single word he's saying. And yeah, just a bit of fun, really. I, I wouldn't take it too seriously. It's just, it just looks really serious on the cover. But yeah, you know, zombie, uh, flesh cult, mutilator, meat freak. You know, it's all about zombies, but it's, it's good fun. So check that one out. And then this band is a hard one for me to get into initially, but I really like it now. I mean, it's a bit of a blind buy because I only liked one track originally called The Maya, and that is uh, Griff Guard with Solemn, Sacred, Severe. Came out through Van Records uh, a while ago. I couldn't tell you the year, but it was a while ago. Um, yeah, Epic Doom, really, really good vocalist, like really powerful operatic kind of singer. Um, in the vein of like almost like Blind Guardian almost in the style, not obviously the sound the same at all, but in the way he kind of puts his vocals forward in the mix and how he sings, it's very epic. Um, but they're a really good band. It's a bit slow and stompy and you know that kind of vibe, but the vocals are what make it and the, the, the melodies are really slow and drawn out. They kind of build it up that way. But the track The Mire is my favourite, the chorus on it is Fantastic. And you'll be singing it for days if you listen to it. So I'll put a link to that down below. But they're, they're really good. And then lastly, it is a new one to me, but I really like this album at the moment. And a lot of other people do. And that is the Caven release. Uh, this is a solo project. Um, came out this year through Black Lion Records. I was given this by a chap called Harry, who I've mentioned in videos before. I'm still very grateful he sent me this. Brilliant, brilliant album. wasn't his thing, but you know, for me, it's 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 a very, very strong album, and it surprised me as well because I had no idea who they were, or what the guy was doing. The project, you know, it features I think members again from Necrophobic, so it seems to be in every Swedish band, but they have been going around for years, so you kind of expect it. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant band. Um, it has that kind of sound as well, like Necrophobic, the newer stuff, so you can kind of compare it to them anyway. Um, but yeah, fantastic album. Definitely worth checking them out. So yeah, that was my uh, Swedish list of my favourite Death Doom, Black Metal, all that kind of thing. I know obviously there was no Entombed, there was no, uh, there's probably loads I've missed, but I probably don't own them. Um, I went through all my collection and pulled out, excuse me, all the Swedish ones I could find that, you know, obviously fitting with this video. So yeah, I could have pulled out maybe Unugi Malmsteen that might upset some people, <laughs> but he's awesome as well. So yeah, in the meantime, I hope you're all well. Thanks for watching. If you don't subscribe, obviously, please do, because it helps me out. Um, hello to all my new subscribers. Uh, I do appreciate the number going up. You know, it's, it's been really cool. And I've, you know, been speaking to loads of cool people recently, like I always do. And it's the most fun part about doing these videos, just to meet new people and talk to people. So yeah, 18 minutes. So it's probably the longest video I've done in a while on this one, but there was quite a few bands I wanted to show. So yeah, take care. And I'll speak to you guys soon. Cheers.